The IANA EV charging network has been quiet the past couple of months, but that doesn't mean it hasn't been hard at work and making progress. But here today, we did get a press release from IANA giving us some news about the network proliferation. In fact, in the month of April, the network doubled the amount of rechargeries it has opened, literally opening as many new sites in April as it had previously opened. We get that news today in addition to some pricing news. They have some reduced pricing that they're going to be uh, implementing at all of their sites. And we're also getting a little more information on network expansion and also the different levels of rechargeries that IONA is going to operate. All that plus more is coming up in today's IONA update. So let's get into it. So for those that don't know what IANA is, let me just take a minute and explain. IANA is a high-speed DC fast charging network that promises to have 30,000 DC fast charging bays deployed across America by 2030. It's less than five years, so very lofty goals. And this company was formed by a collaboration of eight very large automakers, General Motors, Stellantis, BMW, Mercedes, Kia, Hyundai, Toyota, and Honda. Those eight companies got together and said, look, we need to improve the customer experience with EV charging in North America. So let's all get together, put our money in a pot, and blanket the country with DC fast charging sites and do it right. Now, there's a lot of DC fast charging networks in America today and across the world. And a lot of them have been poorly executed. And I think uh, IANA realized that the experience that their customers, the individual companies, I mean, realized that their customers had a very poor charging experience in public. And that reflected on them. They were selling them the cars. And if they had a poor charging experience, that was a poor experience with their product. So they said, okay, we need to improve this. So let's get together, put all our money in one pot and build out a coast to coast, high speed DC fast charging network. And this company started last year, began deploying some sites just a couple of months ago. The first site opened, I went down to Apex, North Carolina for that opening. And since then, they opened five more sites. So there were six sites opened up until April. And this press release today is to announce that in the month of April alone, they doubled their sites. There's now 12 sites open and they're ramping up. IANA promises to have a thousand charging bays, individual charging bays, not locations, open by the end of 2025. And right now, currently, they're averaging about 10 bays per location. So you would do the math and say, okay, they should be at about 100 sites by the end of this year if they're able to hit their expectations. So let's take a quick look at uh, the press release or some of the items in the press release, at least, that uh, they're putting out today. State of Charge is powered by Cumerit, North America's premier installer of electric vehicle charging equipment. After I've helped you decide which charger to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and have Cumerit install it. And if you do follow that link, Cumer will waive the $150 installation deposit. But this is an exclusive offer for State of Charge followers. So in order to get that offer, you must follow the link in the description of my videos. Six new rechargeries have gone live to the public in April, doubling our network size insights to 12 and bays to 120, marking our first set of batch openings this year, but certainly not the last. So as you can see there with 12 locations and 120 bays, they're averaging 10 bays per location right now. And if that holds through the end of the year and they hit their 1000 bay goal, they should have about 100 sites open. In construction now, 16 additional rechargeries have fences up and are in active construction across the US, bringing the total of open and in construction sites to 28 dots on the map across 14 states. Open road pipeline, over 200 contracted sites across the US, 
double the 100 announced earlier this year, brings us to over 2,000 charging bays inked and moving along the pipeline. Whether they get all 200 of those sites open by the end of this year remains to be seen, but it seems like they're actually ahead of what they projected. The network also announced that they have a friends and family reduced pricing scheme in effect right now for a limited time. And they mentioned that you can get membership rates without having a membership yet, which leads me to believe that they are going to have some sort of a membership where you pay a monthly fee and get reduced pricing. They haven't communicated that yet. And I've asked Ayana directly about this on a few occasions. Will customers be able to join the Ayana network pay a monthly fee and get reduced rates. The company's not ready to give us all the details on that just yet. However, they have released details today on the special perks that customers of the eight founding members of IANA will get. So let's take a look at those now. All right, I'll do this in alphabetical order. We'll start off with BMW. All IANA locations and charge points are fully digitally integrated and accessible through the My BMW app and in the in-vehicle navigation system. Plug-in charge is already live today. Special offers applicable to IANA in the future. General Motors. GM EV drivers can easily find and access IANA charging stations directly through their GM My Brand apps with full integration for a seamless experience. Starting in Q2, customers will begin to enjoy the plug-in charge experience at IANA sites, automatically initiating charging and payment with no extra steps. Honda, special offers applicable to IANA and plug-in charge in the future. Hyundai, 2025 IONIQ 5, IONIQ 5N, IONIQ 6, and Genesis drivers who choose the charging credit offer receive up to $500 of charging credit through the ChargePoint app. With credits usable at IANA stations, plug-in charge is rolling out soon. Mercedes-Benz, model year 2025 EV owners have the option to add a $1,000 public charging voucher to their MB Charge public account and apply it to charging sessions on the IANA network. Plug-in charge is live today. Kia, Kia America's recently launched Kia Charge Pass program allows find, charge, and pay capability within the Kia Access app. This includes all IANA stations, future IANA special offers, and plug and charge coming soon. Stellantis, certain model year drivers of the Jeep Wagoneer S, Dodge Charger Daytona, and Fiat 500e who choose the free to move charge go package can apply the $600 public charging credits at all IANA rechargeries. Plug and charge coming soon. Toyota, discounts coming soon. So just as I speculated, owners of the EVs that are made by the eight founding members of IANA will get special treatment on the IANA network. And honestly, they should. These are the companies that are putting their money into the network, so their customers should benefit from that. We also learned a little bit more about the different types of IANA rechargeries that will be out there. And yes, IANA calls their locations rechargeries. They're not charging stations, they're rechargeries. And they have different types of rechargeries. And they gave us some information about that in the past, but they clarified things uh, with this press release. So let's take a look at the different types of IANA rechargeries and what you can expect to see at each one of those sites. All right, we'll start at the top of the line, the IANA Best Rechargery, which is called Rechargery Beacons. These are supposed to offer a Halo customer experience. These will be IANA Rechargeries with 24 or more bays. And these locations will have as many pull-through bays as possible. They'll have a marquee food and beverage partnership on site, and the beacon sites will have rechargery features plus anchor amenities like a market, an outdoor park, and or other amenities. Then there's the IANA Rechargery, and that offers a full experience and amenities branded or partnered at. Those sites are gonna have between 10 and 16 bays, plus amenities like retail, restrooms, Wi-Fi, vending, a lounge, co-working, and others. 
There'll be an outdoor and indoor customer experience with as many pull-through bays as possible. And lastly, they have what they call the rechargery relays. And these sites are gonna have between eight and 14 stalls. They mention here that they have 400 kilowatt charging bays with branded dispensers. All of their bays in the rechargeries and rechargery beacons are 400 kilowatt bays with branded dispensers. So there's no difference there. And also canopies, but they do mention canopies may be limited by location requirements. These sites will have trash cans, window cleaning, pet and other features by Iana. Restrooms and retail will always be nearby. So Anna is doing things a little bit differently than the other companies out there. All of the other networks just lease parking stalls in somebody else's parking lot, drop their chargers in, and that's it. They call it a day. Iana is actually buying some land in some of their locations they own and operate. They're buying up old gas stations that went out of business and turning them into these rechargeries with lounges, food and beverage on site, Wi-Fi, even office space to have a little meeting if you're on the road and uh, you need to stop and charge and have a Zoom call or something like that. So, you know, we're, we're still in the very early days of IANA, but what we're seeing so far is very promising, how they continue to proliferate and uh, uh, add uh, charging locations. That's going to be, you know, it's always the devil's always in the details, but so far so good. And uh, it's always the hardest to get rolling. So in 2024, uh, they didn't get too much done that we could see. I'm sure they got a lot of work done, but they only opened up a few sites. Now in 2025, it seems to be accelerating really quickly. And they've got you know, over 200 sites under contract. So uh, we'll see by the end of this year, if they have somewhere between 100 and 200 locations, that would be fantastic. They'll blow by their 1,000 charging bay estimate that they put out a few months ago by the end of 2025. If they already have 200 sites under contract and, uh, you know, hopefully in engineering and getting uh, interconnection with the utilities. I mean, installing DC fast charging sites doesn't happen overnight. It takes many, many months. I think that was one of the things that held some of the NEVI sites from opening up. Another thing was perhaps some bureaucracy uh, between the states and the funding and so forth. But uh, electric vehicle charging stations don't get installed in a month. They take a while. There's a lot of engineering, back work, and uh, uh, contracts with the utilities to get enough power to the site. Sometimes that could be the linchpin that takes months and months to get the utility to put in a transformer so that you can have enough power on the site. But uh, IANA seems to be progressing very well. Uh, it's good to hear because we need more charging. Uh, I don't know if any of you've seen the Walmart video that I just put out. Walmart announced that they're gonna be putting chargers across the country in thousands of their locations. So you, know, you have IANA pledging 30,000 charging bays by 2030. Uh, Walmart uh, didn't want to put a number on it, but they're definitely talking about tens of thousands of charging stations by 2030. Uh, you know, we're, we're probably going to be in good shape if these just these two companies alone hit what they're promising. And uh, that's not even talking about the existing networks like EVgo, Electrify America, and Tesla continuing to expand on their location. So I think, uh, you know, public EV charging is about to get a lot better and uh, really quickly. So uh, this is all good news. And we also have to keep an eye on uh, the uptime of these chargers. Uh, one of the things IANA promises is that they're going to have uh, very reliable units. Now, the Alpatronic HYC 400s that they're using seem to be very reliable units. So we're getting good feedback so far. They've been used in Europe for a while, and the people there say that they're very reliable. So hopefully they'll be reliable here, and we won't have the problem that we had in some of the other networks where chargers are broken, take months and months to get fixed. IANA pledges that that isn't going to be the case, but you could always talk the talk. Let's see them walk the walk. I hope that they do fulfill their promise and keep their stations up and have a high reliability because the worst thing that you could do is pull up to a charging station and you can't charge there because the site's down or there's you know, half the chargers are broken and there's a line of people waiting to get on them. Uh, I think uh, IANA understands that this has been a problem and they don't want to see that happen on their network. The whole reason why these eight companies got together and did IANA was to improve the charging experience. So, you know, if they just came out and did the same old, same old, 
you know, they wouldn't accomplish anything. They'd be a waste of money. So that in itself, to me, seems to be incentive to do better. And uh, well, we'll be keeping an eye on Ayana and uh, watching their progress. I know I will be for sure. I may take a ride to one of their locations with uh, pull-through sites and check that out. Uh, before I go today, let's take a look at the 12 sites that are currently open on the Ayana network. Okay, I'll go through these in alphabetical order. We have Albaline, Kansas, and that's a rechargery relay. We have the Apex Rechargery in Apex, North Carolina. Then there's Blue Springs, Missouri, which is a rechargery relay. Corsicana, Texas, which is also a rechargery relay. The Garner Rechargery in Garner, North Carolina. The Houston Rechargery in Houston, Texas. There's the Reynoldsburg Rechargery in Reynoldsburg, Ohio. There's a Rechargery At in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Springfield, Ohio has a Rechargery At. Wakeney, Kansas has a Rechargery Relay. Wilcox, Arizona has another Rechargery Relay. And in Willoughby, Ohio, there's a Rechargery At. All right, well, that's all I have here today for my IANA update. I'm gonna stay on top of this company for sure and get the latest news to you guys as soon as it breaks. Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.